G'day folks. Oh, I want you to say hello to my uh, little friend here. She's a, well, not so little, but a uh, Mercedes ML270 CDI. Uh, the opportunity to buy a, uh, not just an M-Class, which I know people have mixed opinions on, but a diesel for under $4,000 was just completely irresistible, especially with uh, 12 months registration, uh, 2,000 plus kilogram towing capacity. I think it's about 2,600 kilogram towing capacity. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, Vicky's still being sold at the moment and uh, yeah, doing pretty well. So I figured why not? I'll uh, look at replacing the Ford Fairmont, which is just a bag of gremlins at the moment, just like, well, this one. <laughs> I don't think I've bought any, any less gremlins, but to be honest, why not? The Fairmont's looking way too ratty and worn out and basically I'm ashamed to drive it. It's just all the paint's coming off it. It's uh, it's not a happy car. Still drives fine, but yeah. Fairmont's had its day. It'll go to a good home for basically the price of Rego, the same as what I paid. And I'll see if Julian or one of my friends at work wants him. It is a uh, runabout, just a beater until it dies essentially. Just keep pushing it. I can't be bothered. I want something new. I get I get bored really easy with cars. I mean, I love my Ravs, but yeah, we'll change something else up as we go. So, well, yeah, 2001 model, 350,000 Ks. Engine hauls ass. It is an awesome engine. It's a five-cylinder common rail diesel. Uh, we'll do plenty of videos on this as I tidy it up and do some maintenance work on it including the rear injector copper washer uh, that is leaking pretty bad uh, hasn't covered everything in in muck yet but it's getting there uh, they call it the black death because there's normally a plastic cover over here and that contains all the soot and the the exhaust va vapor that comes out and everything just ends up completely covered in sludge thankfully that's out of there and most of it's dissipated with moving air as you're driving so hasn't been anywhere near as bad but yeah black death look that one up I'm not talking about the plague this is a uh, Mercedes common rail diesel issue where I think all of them do it at one point or another in their life the injector copper washes the base washes that seal the injector into the combustion chamber start uh, leaking and thankfully my mechanic that does my roadworthy pre-inspections has uh, a tool to basically just ream it out, ream it out and vacuum all the crap out of the uh, the injector tube and the, the bore, clean all that crap out, put the injector back in with a new washer kit and um, stretch bolt kit because there's a little clamp holding them down in there. I've got two kits on order so that's 10 bolts, 10 uh, washers. Uh, you reinstall them like that and they're good again. So yeah, not too bad. That one's also leaking fuel. There's a bit of diesel coming down the valley, which probably works in my favour because it's going to keep that discharged um, soot and crap soft. Uh, yeah, it's it's not too bad. It's going to be fun to work on. I mean, it's such a different engine. I've worked on regular diesels, mechanically injected diesels before, but this one's cool. Yeah, that's a vacuum pump. Don't know what that is. Actually, I think that's the high pressure pump. That's the rail, 22,000 PSI. Yeah, metal line. Yeah, that's the diesel high pressure pump. That pumps diesel up to 22 to 30,000 PSI and uh, delivers the uh, the necessary pressure for these injectors to work. And they are, you, you imagine discharging 22,000 PSI of uh, diesel fuel through a very fine nozzle. It creates an awesomely fine vapor which mixes with air instantly and under heat and compression well, basically, this doesn't have glow plugs or anything. This thing just starts as it is. I'm pretty sure. Although, what are you? Oh, maybe it does have glow plugs. There's something down there on each cylinder. It does still have the little glow coil wire light on the dash, so maybe it does still use a glow. I'm not too sure. But those little connectors there look a bit too flimsy and soft to be... Uh... No, they're on the intake. They're not glow plugs. They'll be uh, probably intake air temperature sensors or something because there's the intake side um, air metering and regulation 
Uh, there's a mass airflow. I think that's mass airflow there. Or there, there's probably a number of different sensors. Uh, there's a turbocharger hiding under that heat shield there, which sings like a, uh, well, just it just sings. It's awesome. <laughs> Works perfectly fine. No weird noises, no faulting or anything like that. There's some kind of regulator module in there. Some big high current cables going to it and back up to the firewall. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Definitely need new hood struts. But the good old 2x4 hood strut does the job for me now. That one's there. The other one I took out because none of them have gas left in them. It's funny, that gas struts don't work when they don't have gas in them. So yeah, I'm just having a look around and tinkering with things. I replaced the two 30 amp fuses for the interior switch panel because it was uh, not working and the switch caps are broken off so I've got a new uh, power window switch panel and new fuses. I'm just working on finding out why the driver's seat doesn't work anymore. Yeah, interesting engine. Yeah, common rail direct injection. It's a very good way of doing it. I don't know if that's what Rudolf Diesel had in mind when he designed the diesel engine, but it is an excellent uh, excellent improvement on the mechanically injected diesel. Definitely need to do this belt. That's nasty. It's split. <laughs> those two outer or innermost grooves or those V's are about to sever completely. That's going to be fun. Ah, it's the joys of working on a modern car. I knew what I was getting in for. Or getting into. Yeah. Back pump. Ow. Yeah, definitely need to do those hood struts. Funny thing is the rear trunk lid struts have been done. They're dual 700 Newton struts and I can barely close the thing. They're way too overpowered. So I'll get onto the same company. My work source is gas struts from uh, Gas Struts Australia. So I'll get on to work and just send them a sample, send them the other one of those, and uh, see what they can match up. And hopefully, it, well, in the case of a hood strut, I don't mind them being too tight. In the case of the trunk lid struts, too tight's a pain in the ass because you can't close it with one hand. I need two free hands and a lot of my body weight to actually pull it down. <laughs> Mind you, I am built like a jockey. I'm not exactly uh, hefty. Big ass fuse. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. The ML series was made in the USA in a brand new plant, brand new platform and brand new work crew, so it has its issues, which a lot of people will point out to me and have in the past. But most of them are well recognised, well documented, and there are well known fixes for them, so it's not hard to do. And these engines, I don't believe, were ever built in the US. I believe the engine itself was brought in from uh, Germany or similar a, a well-established manufacturer. It's just the chassis and the assembly was done in the US. Uh, these engines will outlive the body. Again, a number of people have told me that. These engines just last forever, as long as you take care of them. But the body itself and the electronics can have some dremlins, which I'm finding. Power seat's not working, power window's now working. I'm just getting a new switch console come in. But yeah, not a bad rig. Needs four new tyres, the brakes look good, the pads are almost new, stops on a dime, like it's re it's the best braking car I've ever owned. Given it weighs two tonnes, it stops incredibly well. Battery's very old, but still works. Uh, could be part of the reason why I'm getting ABS and EBD codes. But more than likely the uh, ABS and EBD codes are related to either moisture getting down into the connector on the ABS block down there, probably from the washer bottle, that's a documented problem, or the module itself in there gets knocked and uh, starts playing up because two of the lights only come on after you start driving and go over a few bumps, so there's a loose or chafed wire somewhere. In the front, got auto cooler, intercooler and uh, condenser and radiator. So one, two, three, four different uh, heat exchanges before the radiator, but being a diesel it probably doesn't... Oh, diesels still run pretty hot. they just uh, not quite as much as a petrol engine, I don't think. Yeah. Hmm. 
not half bad. Seven seats, not that I need them. To be honest, I'd rather have a full-size spare tyre bolted into the side here, not the dicky little uh, donut spare, which has been used. It's very old. I don't think I'd ever use it myself. I'm going to see about a full-size spare. Rear end suspension's pretty uh, solid looking, all cast iron, I think. Yeah. Tow hitch, electric trailer brake module. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah, four new tyres, uh, fixing some electrical gremlins like the uh, driver's seat not working. I've just resoldered that module and it hasn't changed anything so I've got to go through the rest of the harness down there and pop, I think it's that kick panel there, pop that off and have a look at the other fuses that are in it or the module itself. So yeah, passenger one works perfectly fine which is weird but to drive this I have to put a bloody throw pillow behind my back before I can actually push against anything. It's uh, pretty bad. So, yeah, when I got it, the um, driver's window switch was missing and I couldn't get the window up, so I drove all the way home from Werribee to uh, down the Mornington Peninsula with uh, icy cold breeze and uh, the heater going full bore. It was fun. It worked. But I got another panel on order for about 30 quid. Parts for these in the UK are ridiculously cheap. That's $250 in Australia, but the exact same part I can get for, like, 60 bucks. It's crazy. You just got to shop around and be patient. Seats are in reasonable nick. Nothing's obviously torn. Bit of stitching, that sort of thing. Again, 300 and something thousand Ks. Can't say it's... Can't expect it to be perfect. She's had a bump on the nose and the airbags have gone off. you notice they're a different colour. The top dash panel and the passenger airbag and this one here have been changed. But from what I can see, inside and under the front end, everything's been done by the book. Flick key too, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Sony head unit, not exceptional. We were looking at fixing the lag problem with it last night and uh, couldn't find any uh, any viable fixes. There are just no fixes for it. They're just really laggy. You push the buttons on some of it and it takes ages to respond. Oh well, doesn't matter. I'll replace that. It's full light check. Yeah, you can hear the, the chuffing from the number 5 injector seal leaking. And the BAS ESP light stays on. And then after a bit of driving, the other two next to it come on. So it's a, probably the module. The modules get bad solder joints. Very well known issue. But, yeah, I don't know. I'll have a bit of a play around with it. Again, parts aren't that expensive, so... It's not like I'm fixing a 2010 model, this is a 2001 model, there are plenty of bits around. Uh, yeah, just a good little, good little fixer-upper and hopefully a tow car. Yeah, so apart from that compression leak, it seems pretty fine. Once you get the revs up a little bit, everything's perfect. Just pulls so hard through the roundabouts and all that sort of thing coming back home. I was just planting it and she'd 
out accelerate a lot of hatchbacks and other cars that were trying to overtake me on the left. Um, yeah, just leaving behind in a bit cloud of black smoke. <laughs> That's about the only time it blows smoke. Foot to the boards, bit of smoke, everything else, nah. Take you. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> Anyway, what is this? Uh, it's got Bluetooth and everything enabled. That all works. There's a Nokia Bluetooth uh, system. I don't know what that is up on the screen now. I'm guessing that's an antenna. Oh, yeah, it's got the screw-on connector. That's an antenna. The screen itself's got a few little pock marks and chips and things on it. It's probably original, but might just pass roadworthy. I hope it passes roadworthy. Tires alone are going to be about $800 for a set of 265 7016s. So I'm going up in size. Uh, she's already got 255 65 16s. So I'm just going basically one up and uh, should be good. But yeah, apart from a few little just wear and tear issues that are a, problem, a known issue with cheap plastics and uh, manufacturing of the time, faultless. Drives well, works well. A little bit of wear and tear on the steering wheel, a bit of wear and tear on the engine uh, ancillary equipment. Yeah, should be fine. A good project, if nothing else. <laughs> anyway, that should do for this afternoon. It's a nice long walk through. I think I've covered everything. It will definitely be, you'll definitely be seeing more videos as I go through some of the uh, bits and pieces. Tonight, I'm just going to have another look. I'll have a poke around with the multimeter and see if this controller module is getting power. I've resoldered it, but it's still uh, nothing. Whereas the passenger one works perfectly fine, so I'm guessing there might be a fuse in that panel there. And that module's not related, that's the uh, trailer brake electric uh, module. That's irrelevant. I don't even have a trailer with electric brakes yet, so yeah. Why is a bit damaged but not wrecked? There'll be some reason why this isn't responding at all. Probably no power. Mind you, this doesn't this doesn't switch current to the motors. This is just a negative trigger for the relays in the module that actually drives the seats. So if there's a break or a disconnection in the negative wire, that will cause the entire circuit to collapse. Yeah, it could be fun. And the accelerator's a bit janky too. Oh, it's plastic. Yeah, it's partially broken at the hinge point. That's why it's a problem. I might just have to bore that out and sleeve it. Yeah. Yeah, there's little things. Little plasticky things. It's sort of what you got to get used to with modern cars. I've basically come to the conclusion that I've just got to get used to it. There's no avoiding them. Oh well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it and uh, you'll see a lot more videos of this one. I'll guarantee it.